Hey, welcome to Skewmorphism, yay, or how as designers we all collectively lost our minds and became obsessed with bevels. Skewmorphism is a design principle based on making the components in your system mimic their real life counterpoint. The easiest example of this is making a button in an interface look as clickably clickable as a button can possibly be. I'm no! Now we were already doing this in design, but there was a certain keynote back in 2007 that really kicked Skewmorphic up a gear. And we are calling it iPhone. Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone under the strap line, Apple reinvents the phone. But it wasn't just phones they were reinventing. They were reinventing how we engage with our digital products. With the iPhone, Apple were releasing a slab of black glass and expecting users to know how to interact with it. They had a problem, so they had to rely on making the interface look as close to the real world as possible. They leaned into skewmorphism and they leaned hard. Everything was given the skewmorphic touch across the user interface. Notes looked like yellow legal pads with their lines all neatly drawn. The microphone looked like an old timey microphone they used to use in the old radio days. And the books were on little neat shelves. It was all pretty charming really, it was kind of sweet. Steve Jobs was allegedly so specific about the stitching in the calendar app that he insisted that it matched the stitching in the leather chairs on his private jet. I have no idea what this achieved, but apparently it was very important. And like so many things where Apple led, we as designers followed, spending literally hours working on buttons, trying to make them the perfect bevel, shine, gloss, texture, all in the pursuit of some zenith of the most clickably clickable button possible. You know, I genuinely once spent an entire morning not only trying to make a button look plasticky, but then working on the type of smudgy fingerprint that you would get on a plasticky button like that. I genuinely feel like I've wasted my life sometimes. But it was all good fun, and it genuinely was fun inventing some of these interfaces. But like all good things, we went too far and we spoiled it for ourselves. Skewmorphism got way out of hand very quickly. Forget about usability or screen real estate, all of that went out the window in the pursuit of trying to make the perfect little render, little interface, little moment, little gadget, what you name it, we were obsessed with them. One of my absolute favorites was an update to the Apple Podcast app that instead replaced the most of the screen real estate with two enormous spools of winding tape. It was honestly incredible. The way that the spools moved, the way that the tape bounced, the attention to detail was incredible. It was also utterly pointless. I mean, look at this thing. Like the buttons are treated like an inconvenience that is just getting in the way of the enormous spools of tape. And wasn't like the whole point of Skewmorphic to relate to something in the real world? Like, look at this thing. This is like a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck. It was 2013, it wasn't 1983. Ah, what a gloriously ridiculous time it was. Anyway, after a few years, and it genuinely did take a few years for people to cotton onto, the fact that a rectangle on a page that said by now was a button that could be clicked on, Suddenly the need for a very shiny, very rendered button didn't seem as important. In fact, it seemed a bit patronizing. So very quickly, almost overnight, we went from this world of bevels and buttons and corners through to flat design. We made everything as flat and as simple as we possibly could. Which is kind of sad because there were some genuine usability benefits of having things match their real world counterpoints. The affordance was really, really good. And to be honest, for a while there, we possibly did go a little bit too flat with our website design and things did start getting a little bit, well, kind of dull. Which kind of brings us up to where we are now with the pendulum swinging back the other way, slightly towards skewmorphic, but with a few new tools in our bag that are really helping to enhance that experience. The main one being animation, which is a fantastic way of bringing back that discoverability and that playfulness back into those experiences. Just take a look at the Apple wallet, for instance, it's got all those benefits of those skewmorphic elements. It feels like cards in a wallet, but it's still got that beautifully flat design that we moved to, and it's the animation that really brings it all to life. So hopefully we've found our balancing point, and this is the way interfaces will be for a while now, but you never know, things always change, and possibly in a few years time, I'll be doing one of those videos talking about how animation got way out of hand and we all spoil it for ourselves. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like that, please do like, subscribe, and follow me. And I'm on Twitter, at UXTomM, if you want to drop by and say hi.